Well, this is all that politics, news, debate and opinion from the heart of Westminster. Well, young people are, we're told, worried and resentful about the decision to leave the European Union, which they largely blame on older generations. Those are just some of the findings of a new report published today by the all-party parliamentary group for a better Brexit for young people. So, uh, were young people sidelined and what role can they now play shaping the future and the sort of Brexit that Britain ends up with? Joining me uh, to discuss this are the Labour MP and Chair of the All-Party Parliamentary Group, Stephen Kinnock and Amy Longland from the youth-led group My Life, My Say. Uh, well, Stephen Kinnock, first of all, this research just out, what, what does it tell us? I mean, are young people basically just load of Ramonas? No, I think that young people do feel that their voice was stolen in the referendum and that uh, the decision predominantly was made by the older generation. If you look at the voting figures, something like 70% of 18 to 24 year olds voted remain and the opposite for uh, the over 65s. So there is uh, an imbalance there. The purpose of this report is to just say, look, we're, we're not Ramonas. We're not saying we want a second referendum or anything like that. What we are saying, young people are saying is we want a Brexit that delivers the best possible deal for young people that protect, protect the rights that we've got used to under the EU and makes the most of the opportunities that we have as young people uh, going forward. And I think there's a view that the campaign was not our, fa our finest hour, with the each side shouting at each other. We've, we need to move beyond that now and get some more intergenerational so solidarity as well so that older people will look at the findings of this report and say, OK, that's a good basis for a dialogue, in, and particularly in terms of how we reunite the country. So in... in practical terms as Brexit's negotiated, what, what is, uh, when we talk about young people, what we're talking about the under 30s, what are they looking for? Young people just want to be heard. They just want to be central to the negotiations. So what's actually come out of the report is that they really value an equal and just society and they're worried that Brexit won't deliver on that. They want protection of things such as funding for education, that they're worried that Brexit will, won't, won't deliver for them. So I think what the key thing is that young people want their voices to be heard. They value political engagement. They value political education. They want more avenues with which to become engaged and with which to learn more about the political processes. They do feel overlooked and they just want a way of actually feeding into the negotiations. And that's why this report is so fundamental because it's, it's all over, from all over the UK. It's incredibly diverse. It's Leave and Remain voters. And actually what the report aims to do is say it doesn't matter how you voted or whether you couldn't vote or didn't vote what matters now is that you actually have a say yeah but I mean let's take a practical issue that under the European Union there was freedom of movement that people could go and study uh, around the European Union is that something which they think should be preserved uh, at all costs in these negotiations young people value the, the, the opportunities and the protections they get under EU law. So they value, yes, the idea of being able to go and work and study abroad. Whether that comes down to freedom of movement or the Erasmus Plus programme, it depends, it kind of varies between different young people because Leave voters and Remain voters were both in the report. But what's really, really important is that things such as Erasmus Plus funding, things such as education funding are protected because those matter to young people. I mean, those things, education, I mean, they're not really directly related to Brexit at all, are they? Um, not the uh, internal workings of our education system. No, no that's devolved. Yeah. yeah, that's part of not only devolved to member states, but also in our country to the Welsh and Scottish governments, for example. But there are very important programmes like Erasmus mm -hmm. and Erasmus Plus, which facilitate the exchange of uh, students and of information and know-how, and also the huge cultural advantages mm -hmm. that we get that have enriched. Uh, mm. our society just as they have uh, other societies by us sending our brightest and best students mm. uh, to other countries. So it would be a, a, a terrible mm. sort of a parody of Brexit if we ended up uh, reducing uh, all the but, diversity and but richness many, many that we get Many of those sort of academic programmes or whatever are European Union programmes and presumably when we leave the European Union we wouldn't have the same access to them. Well, that's exactly why we want young people to have a strong voice in the negotiations, so that we make sure that when we transition out of the European Union, we don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, mm -hmm. and that we keep some of these really value-adding uh, and, and good programmes in place. And, and one of the things the uh, APPG, the All-Party Parliamentary Group, does, and as the chair of it, I'm very proud to be the chair, we see ourselves as an interface between this amazing 
amazing network that My Life, My Say has put together of uh, youth groups and a voice in Parliament influencing decision makers. So the next step is to take the data, take the opinion polling and use it as a platform for influencing decision makers. I mean, I mean, that's what I was going to say. I mean, in practical terms, you say young people's voice need to be heard. Is, is that how you have to do it through MPs and others? Well, what we do is, as MLMS, so we do a lot of outreach work. So we go all across the UK to lots of different regions and we talk to young people. And what young people say is they want to be listened to. And that means that through the APPG, we can use the report, we can champion what comes out of the report and we can use the parliamentary privileges. But what's also really important is that we are working with the Department for Exiting the EU, working with the European Commission, working with the European Parliament, mm -hmm. who are all developing responses to the report within the next few days. We want, we're engaging with them and we're actually calling upon EU negotiators, UK decision makers and saying work with us, use this report, place Young People Central, they're going to live with it the longest. So in a practical sense our APVG is a structured engagement platform and we can maybe affect policy outcomes on behalf of young people. Are there any opportunities coming out of Brexit? I mean I know you don't want Brexit but as far as young people are concerned can you see any positives at all? Well I think one of the positive parts of the referendum and this whole Brexit process is the United Kingdom now has a far better understanding of what the EU mm -hmm. is and what it does than we've ever had so that's one of the great ironies of this um, uh, and that I think we've got to build on that we need more education in schools about what the EU is and how it works mm -hmm. uh, we need um, to build on the engagement and we saw with the mm -hmm. ju uh, June the 8th general election I think the huge surge in young people voting in that election mm. was actually triggered and catalyzed by the Brexit I mean, there's process. a suggestion, for example, that if we have fewer EU27 workers in this country, that we will have to improve the skills of the rising generation and that there'll be more opportunities uh, for people here. Absolutely, and I think um, whilst uh, the report talks about free movement, it's, not, it's a question of how we build a new system in terms of immigration, in terms of uh, our labour market, which works for everybody. Yeah. And that does mean that we need to build a system that people trust and that progressives make the progressive case for reforming free movement and, and labour. Is anyone excited about it? Did you find anyone? Well, we had a, do you know what came out of the report that was positive? We had a few respondents that actually said, OK, Brexit has politicised the generation and we have opportunity now to capture that mobilisation of young people and to actually say, OK, yes, maybe it wasn't what you wanted, but look, we have all of these opportunities for you now to get involved, get involved in your communities, become politically active. And although overall the report didn't have that many um, positive aspects. What did come out of it and what's really key for us as well is the fact that it has politicised this generation and as Stephen said, you know, if we can focus more on political education and making those avenues available for young people, we can really garner that mobilisation going forward. Thank you both very much. Thank you. Thanks.